And we've just got some live pictures uh, right now, Brad, on our screen of India's next mission. Yes. It has launched a study to the sun. Uh, so these are live pictures that we're just getting into the newsroom right now. Tell us about this mission. Yeah, look, you know, we were just, as he talked about, uh, showing the success of India's first mission landing on the moon. Uh, and now, yeah, uh, this new mission is headed to the sun. So the uh, DITA L1 mission is going to be in orbit around the sun. As we were just seeing, here's the animation and before the actual launch of the rocket with the satellite on board. What this satellite is going to do is going to be put into orbit around the sun to study what we call the solar wind. This is the activity that we see coming off the sun. This solar wind blows through space and actually affects us here on Earth. Um, it produces things like the aurora, the aurora australis or borealis that it can affect. But it can also create interference in electrical systems, satellites. Uh, it can even affect electrical grids. If you get a big enough storms from the sun, as we've seen in the past, it can actually cause interference in electricity. So there's a huge goal in a lot of countries studying the sun to essentially do solar weather, to do this prediction and understand how does it originate and predict how it originates. And this is, you know, when we talk about India and their growing role in space, you know, previously it would take months between these sorts of missions. They had one landing on the moon two weeks ago. They've been having their rover operating and now they're already focused on their next one to the sun. It just goes to show how advanced and powerful India is in space. Yeah, a genuine player in the space world. Uh, it's it's incredible. So I'm glad we got those um, live pictures on our screen just as we were coming to that question, Brad. So uh, good timing. Now let's That's move right. on because the first space station crew with four astronauts from four different countries has docked at the space station. What are they doing? Yeah, so this was quite nice. So earlier this week, the Crew-7, so this was SpaceX's mission um, for NASA of sending the next batch of astronauts. Now, they'll be sending six months doing a variety of experiments based on the country or group they're flying under. But as you said, for the first time, we've actually had four of them, and all are from different countries. So. Normally, when we get a batch of astronauts that go up, you have one American and one Russian because there's an American side and the Russian side. Um, they had, as well as the American and the Russian, uh, a Japanese astronaut, uh, as well as a European astronaut. So you had four different, essentially, space agencies on this mission working for the next six months together. And so each of those groups will, or people will do their own experiments and their own work. And so I think this is kind of the exciting aspect we're seeing in this new space race is that we still find ways of working together even during heightened political tensions here on earth and just how many countries are involved you know we were just talking about india's success and we're watching india's rocket head to the sun right now but we've also really seen those different countries playing their own goals and experiments even the smaller ones um, so to speak, on the International Space Station. So, you know, really in the past two weeks, we've just seen clearly how much space is evolving. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. And, uh, you know, every week we chat, Brad, something different is happening. So there's never a dull moment in the space That's world. Right. Unfortunately, though, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.